the silver and black as we see it. We're we're 55 games in, well over halfway, but it is ceremonially ceremonially the end of the first half of the season. That's how we look at it. And uh, here the Spurs sit dead last in the West, 11 and 44 is their record. Uh, unable to stack two wins, though it started out nice. The Spurs up in uh, Dallas land in the first quarter looked like the team we saw in the previous, who controlled from wire to wire, uh, played a fine basketball game against the Toronto Raptors, but they're only good in the great north. You know, uh, they came back on the other side of the border and they played typical Spurs basketball for three quarters. Uh, couldn't shoot, hit the side of the barn, although Wimby uh, continues to impress and looks Mighty hot, mighty good going into the uh, media magnifying glass that is the All-Star game up there in Indianapolis. Totally. Uh, look, I don't know that anybody should have any negative things to say about Wimby. Um, it's difficult, I think, to see the forest through the trees a little bit on him sometimes just because of the season and how horrible it has been. And I think I think we're so quick as a society to establish microcosms by a lot of people like the you know, like even Patrick Mahomes on Sunday night. Yeah, you know, this game's like a microcosm of our whole season. Not everything's a microcosm, guys. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I feel like we all learned that word and we're all looking for opportunities to use it. But I do think that last night was a bit of a microcosm of what the Spurs season has been. Um, it starts off super hot. We're all excited. We're sending some testicles around. Um, everybody is is super into it. Uh, Jason Minix's exact words, Spurs playing well, dash, energy. And uh, you could feel it. Do you know, Rob, we've played this game before, the last point in the game in which the Spurs had a positive win probability? I, I would that. say 11 minutes into the first. And it was quite a bit after that. Really? Um, you know, yeah. So they they stormed out. I mean, Dallas kind of began the game with a positive win probability for obvious reasons. Uh, but San Antonio overtook it. 6 one in the first. Spurs jumped north at 50%. It was 21-10 San Antonio at that moment in time. And we had a little bit of a kind of, you know, sign, cosine, depending on your vantage point sort of curve here. Uh, but it wasn't until five minutes and seven seconds left in the second quarter in the first half that the Spurs held their last positive win probability of the night. It was, tw- it was I'm sorry, it was 50-43 at that moment. Spurs 50.2% win probability, still north of 50 but after that, Dallas, t- I'm sorry, there's a little bit after that, but still, then Dallas took hold and San Antonio was really not in it in the entire second half. So uh, the first quarter uh, for Spurs fans, it was kind of fun. They bump out 32 points, four of 10 from the three point line. They're dropping dimes, 10 assists, four turnovers. Well, and a okay. nice lead of 32 points as they looked big, they looked fast. They looked aggressive. The Dimes next two quarters is, is is way over glossing what Wemby did. Oh, <laughs> did you want uh, he made uh, the Sports Center? Have you seen the top ten? Yeah, this morning so the had, no looker. I don't think even calling it no look is enough. It was a no look behind the back, weird angle, bent over type pass that was like on a rope. I mean, it was incredible what Wemby did. And his numbers bore it out. First quarter, spectacular. The next two I, quarters, the Spurs uh, went two for 21 from the three-point line. And those two came late in the third. They basically missed 18 straight threes. I mean, it was a a, a collapse, the likes of which it was a bricklayer's union, man. Uh, they weren't even close. I credit them for keep going back to the well. I mean, it wasn't for lack of attempts. It was just as bad a shooting exhibition as, well, I you know, we're accustomed to it, but it was a, 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 contr- a complete and catastrophic failure. And by the beginning of the fourth, the, uh, the game was done. The all-star break was imminent. Everybody was on their phone, Travelocity, making sure the, the, the reservations were. Travelocity, oh, my God. They were on booking.com, <laughs> kayak, to make sure they had the best deal. But the all-star break had begun by the beginning of the fourth quarter. So did you see the video that Mike Finger tweeted out, the slow-mo analysis of Wemby's block on the alley-oop early? But again, when everything was still good. In this when we were still winning early on? Yeah, so Luca tosses up the alley-oop. I'm playing it right now just to kind of give you a little I, play-by-play. And, and he's very aware, Luca, is that Wemby's right behind him. 
And so he's he's very careful to toss it up and avoid Wemby. And as he does, he thinks I'm good. And as the as the oop is in process, Wemby just jumps up and says, "No thanks." I'll like, get that one too. The, the the seamlessness to which this dude can can just exist in in the airspace of the entire court is unbelievable. Um, but I mean, it's not like this is just. I can't ever recall a sporting experience like this where I'm so excited about something, but I'm just so devastated by what's happening all around it. You know what I mean? Like it is a really hard back and forth of emotional tug of war that happens almost on a nightly basis. Here. It is and, difficult to, to watch like, and, and, and enjoy the greatness that is, or that is becoming. And then I, everybody else around him, he's clowns to the left of him, jokers to the right. To coin a phrase. It's, um, it's tough, dude. This was like they were never close. Like it's it's so. F- I mean, it felt like you know I blinked and it was like okay, it was fifty forty three, and it's like they're down eighty to fifty two. Like what? <laughs> like what happened here? Well, it's I mean, a thirty two point third quarter. I, <laughs> it's just, what'll do when you get fourteen. It gets out of hand fast. I mean, dude, how it's so. I want to talk about the play that you just brought up. And now the the, the uh, Sports Center top ten list will have the you know the over the shoulder boulder holder pass whatever he did the behind the back push and what struck me with that pass when you see it on Sports Center or wherever you find it his arms are so long he almost could have handed it to him it was oh, the dude, ball bro. the bar his arm just kept going and finally the ball was released about four feet from his body and Champagne yeah. uh, to his credit hit the three uh, but the biggest... play prior to that the alley oop the Luca play right. where where Wimby is trailing. When you play basketball, one of the things you're when you're on the court, you probably heard it. Somebody screaming "wolf." When you hear "wolf" and you're dribbling the ball, that means somebody's coming to take your lunch. They're coming from behind. You hear "wolf," somebody is coming to get it. So that's kind of your ears are. Well, Luca heard "wolf" from somebody, <laughs> and did the right thing. But the wolf kept coming. The wolf got the pass too. You brought up a play that when I watched it, I had to pause it and go back. I've never seen a player able to defend the beginning and the end of an alley oop. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I mean, that's why I was, I was so appreciative of, of my finger for for tweeting it out the way that he did because it's, I mean, it, the like the defense of the alley is not like overwhelming, right? I mean, it's it's simply like Wemby's just existing. You know what I mean? It, like, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to over credit Wemby at this point. He's he's lightly jogging behind Luke <laughs> he really at this point is. in time. But but again, given who he is, I mean, he's simply de- he's defending it by simply existing. Um, but you're right. Like when Luca lets go of that pass, he's like, "I'm good." <laughs> he's like, "We're we're straight." Like, th- th- what could go wrong at this point in time? Like, nothing can nothing bad can possibly happen here. Um, which is again exciting to consider. You know, I mean, this is this is a a, a baby lear- not even learning to walk. Like, I mean, Seriously. like learning to just. Like this is the baby rolling over on their tummy, and you're like, "Whoa, you have that was the really slightest good. sense of mobility." <laughs> right? right, that was really good. And you know, you're only like four days old, and he's <laughs> he's already kind of jogging around the room. I'm a little afraid. the The stat line is just brutal. If Dude. when you pull out, just go to the box score, and the Spurs offered you thirty six of a hundred shooting. They were 10 of 40 from three. And thank you, Malachi, for showing up in the fourth quarter. It had been worse than that. Uh, They only had nine turnovers. But they only shot 15 free throws in a a 48-minute game. Now, you can blame the refs for this. No, that's not the refs. That's you not being aggressive. That's Keldon going one for 11 from the field. Oh. That's that's Keldon. I was praising Keldon for starring in his role. That he is he's a pretty good sixth guy. He's a pretty good, let me come in and dominate the offensive side for a little bit and see if we can shake something up. He's been pretty good at that. Last night he was not. And it's that inconsistency that just kills you. I just you know, here's what's starting to kind of gnaw at you. And I I don't know how deep most of you guys are into the Spurs, but there's a lot of different great resources to kind of dig into the film and and, and look at what the Spurs are doing. Um, I, I saw a film breakdown of a couple of plays that the Spurs are really good at. It floppy is a, a term that you know we used to be down with the four down kind of play. Anybody who's been following the Spurs, where floppy is kind of a Spurs 
basic play and things are built off of that. And it's kind of a high pick and roll thing. I'm starting to wonder, you know, Pop has all the credentials in the world, the good to better, better to best, this offense that we have seen perform in its very purest form 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And how hard it is to meld yourself into this amoeba of an offense where you're you're in the right place only because all four of you up, away from the ball are all in the right place. And if one guy's in the wrong place, you're all in the wrong place kind of thing. I think, are we teaching master's level basketball to freshmen in college? I mean, wait, are we are we expecting, can't we go a little bit easier? Can we just run a little bit of stuff to kind of highlight what skills we've had? Well, yeah, I'm tired I mean, of watching um, guys look lost. It does, on some level, it feels like maybe you just need to teach them basketball. <laughs> Just like, yes, smart like, plays, not the play, but just smart plays. Just yeah, smart um, play. Yeah, like if it, it, you know, they call it one hundred and one for a reason. You know what I mean? Like this, this is a, this is a, you know, this is an intro course. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's no need to act disingenuous towards the overall process here. And I do think that I, I don't totally blame Pop for this, but because. I mean, it's hard to kind of, it's hard to water who you are down. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? And it's hard to not have expectations of professionals and, you know, things like that. But at the same time, it's like, do you kind of got to recognize what you're working with here? And it's, it's, you know, we had given up. We, this, this is, this is an, ep- Rob, I, I think the, the best, you're, you're Bobby Flay, right? <laughs> that That's who you are. You're used to, you know, uh, I always find it amazing, like the level of you know kitchenware they have, and like they never have to do their own dishes. Like it must be nice, right? Like you're Bobby Flay, and you're a world-renowned chef, and you have to teach you know these these would-be cooks to to do this and to do that. But the problem is you're not on Beat Bobby Flay, where you're you're getting the like the best chefs in the world. You're on Chopped, right? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> like you're on Chopped, and it's like, hey, dude, we need you to make something amazing out of Fruit Loops, cottage cheese and raisin bread you know what i mean like so we're not here to like work on um our chopping techniques and um what is it called when when you chop something really finely what's the word i'm thinking of dicing no there's a, a julian is that what Ju- it's called? well that's the julian and it's kind of like french fry it's very thin fry. that's what I, that's, that's what i was thinking of let's just say like we don't need to be teaching julian here we just need you to take these ingredients and make something edible. That's literally goal number one right now. And we're 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 missing that in a lot of respects. Now let's talk about the one good thing we've got, and that's Victor. Because again, he is shining. And now we're that's two consecutive games where we're getting not only a pretty consistent three-point shot that's opening up some things offensively, but because of that three-point shot that people are having are going to consistently charge out at him, he's able to put the ball on the ground and get the ball a little bit further in on that second level. And that's where he is the best passer for the Spurs, facing the basket, not at the le- not at the rim level, but that second level free throw or the elbow uh, on the on the paint. He is a brilliant passer because he's he's so tall; he can see over and down. And he's pretty good at getting the ball to you. He's good at, he understands the bounce passes, those little nuances that a lot of guys have to learn. He's already got. But I, and it's because of his ability to pass the ball and it's because his ability to protect the rim that I just can't fathom the most basic question. How can he be so good and the team be so bad? It's It's a unique combination of factors well, right like it's I and, mean, it, again, and it varies from game to game there's a hundred reasons why this team is bad but when it comes down to it the, they're just not very back basketball smart there's just there's a, a a lack of just innate this is what i'm supposed to do and some of it is they're trying to fit into a system that is so difficult to learn but that's the thing. Like, who cares about the system now? Well, I mean, because because Wemby is the system, and and the system that you. it will become is is not existent yet. You know, like the the system is what Wemby is with Trey Young or Wemby is with whoever. You know what I'm saying? Like the I'm system, system isn't even. I am a system. <laughs> you know, like wrong guy. Like we're we're trying to build the second floor of the house when we haven't even bought the lot yet. You know what I mean? Like 
we we still have to you know look through neighborhoods and check the the school districts and see if the restaurants nearby are what we like we can't we can't be like oh well this is let's let's go buy the couch for the loft what you know what i mean <laughs> like we have so many other problems to address before we get to that point in time like we we have to kind of come back down to bait we have to learn basketball look guys this is the nba the goal is the ball in the hoop that's where we have to start first right. and foremost <laughs> shot making and pop talked about it i saw a lot of good things but did you shot making wasn't one of them you know today's league you can't be 10 for 40 and have a decent chance to win a game for sure so what league could you it's be? a lot of defensive transition that sort of thing but hustle we took great shots Want to. you know you had no problem with uh contested shots or anything like that that's not what they were they're wide ass open and you know we, we didn't make any of them so uh, that's going to put you in a hole and on top of that you know i thought luca and Kyrie, you know they played like hall of fame players oh, you know, they were like, fantastic oh, they were really something we couldn't we couldn't do anything with them but uh, so a lot of good things from the young guys that uh, we can build on just have to keep shooting the shots they don't go in if you don't shoot them so it just makes it a tough night See, no coach is ever going to be mad at you for missing shots. I mean, they'll talk I mean, to you and we'll work on form and all that. But, you know, shots are a, a fluky thing. And sometimes it, there's a lid on the basket. But when, you know, you're not going to win 10 for 40. My, you know, you're not going to win. But he also brought up that second little thing, and he didn't bring it up enough. Transition defense, which is just want to. Just either get the offensive rebound or get back. One or the other. And they're not doing anything. They watch the offensive rebound hit the ground. It seems like a third of the time. And then as they watch the ball hit the ground and that next outlet pass goes, three of our five guys are watching the play and they know the player's name because they're looking at it. They're looking at the guy's last name because they're not in front of them. They couldn't tell you the team. They can tell you the name because they're looking at it as they're running down, watching the guy lay the ball up. It was, uh, it that's the thing that kills you, the effort. It's a broken team. I mean, like, it's a broken team with one amazing superstar. I mean, that's that's really what this is. Have you seen, um, I brought up a meme earlier, the what are you going to do, stab me meme? Uh, have you seen, um, there's a really popular meme. It's like a, I don't know what kind of car it is, but it's like, let's call it a Ferrari. It's like a Ferrari in like a rundown house. Have you ever seen this before? Uh, no, but I'm, so, I'm with I you. Mean, it's, it's like It's like a $100,000 car in like a shack of a carport you know what i mean mm -hmm. like with a with a house that kind of matches the carport and, and people will, will you know present this to me and they'll be like wemby on the spurs you know like <laughs> that's kind of what it is right now it's like i mean it's just he can only drag i i, I wouldn't even say drag i mean he's because i think he's pushing i i think he's he's not dragging implies like pulling against their will i think that they want to be good i mean you know I, I don't think that the attitude is, is horrible or anything like that i think that it's just that they're just not talented enough. I mean, and that that's okay. Like that's that's not a demerit or an indictment against them by any stretch of the imagination. But you know, you actually, and we've talked about this with with Devin and how you know Pop has kind of set him up to be, and you've talked about it a lot with Jeremy. Like you actually set them up to look worse when mm -hmm. you when you put them in these positions because then we have to sit here and talk about how they're not good enough when they they can be viable and can't be viable NBA starters or you know right. serious members of your team night in and night out and so you're setting them up to look you know like there's a big gap between them and the field by trotting them out there every single night and onward we go Kuz you're right it feels like they're take six or seven games to build up their game breaker appreciate the video game reference if you got something oh, to wow. say you can reach out a lot of different ways six five six three seven seven six we love to talk to you and we have a standing rule you get there you wait you're on uh, but it's also always easier, we know, to go to our YouTube feed and connect with us there. But to do that, we would appreciate if you would subscribe.